What is going on, Buff Nation? Welcome back to another video. You guys absolutely smashed the comment section on the last video about the new DC, which got me believing we got to talk about these comments and how you guys are feeling about the new DC hire. So we're going to be doing that today, but also, most importantly, Warren Sapp just announced that he will be taking the job at the Buffs come March. We'll talk about what job he's getting, his title, what it all means here in just a moment. And then obviously leave your comments about that, your thoughts on him joining the team. And we can do reactions to that if you guys enjoy this kind of video. And then later on, we're going to be doing a interview with a 2025 recruit that has an offer from Colorado, get his thoughts and opinions on the entire situation, recruiting cycle, etc. All those things. It's going to be a blast before we do any of that. Of course, you know, we already got to do it. Play my damn theme. I Never, never misses, boys and girls. But again, be sure to smash the like button and turn on the notification bell if you guys are subscribed. We're only to 9,000 subs. I mean, a lot of you could help, uh, you know, continue to grow this family. But first order business, of course, Warren Sapp has announced or is in, uh, announced that he will be joining the staff come March. Here's the interview from the Denver podcast, and then we'll talk all about it, of course. March uh, is where I'm coming. You're coming. That's what I'm told. Stamp it. That's what Prime said. All right. All right. So, if he so, said it. So if Prime tells me I'm coming to Mars, then stamp it, right? Yes. yes. So I'm uh, stamping it. We're stamping Alrighty. it. My bags are packed. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go, <laughs> Let's man. Go, man. What's your title going to be? Graduate assistant. I got to go. I got to go. Let's go. Assistant. Hell yeah, yeah I got, man. I got to start at the bottom. No one, no oh, one yeah. lets you go to the top. But irregardless of what that title says, I know what my influence will be. Yes, sir. Man. You know what I'm saying? We're we, we going to get to the nitty gritty. Yeah. And we're going to do this the right way because there's only one way to play the position I know. In them trenches, the one, the three, the five, the seven. In the nine. Yep. Let's go to work. So I think this is also going to play towards the DC hire, which we'll get into and read your guys' comments and your thoughts and the opinions about this. But a lot of people were asking where is Warren Sapp because this was a big thing at the you know the middle of last year. Then it kind of got hushed a little bit. We talked about on this show there were some allegations going on and Colorado was kind of pushing back on it. Seems they've worked it out some well, some uh, shape or form. But what a grad assistant is for those of you who don't know, I'm going to read the the actual title and then give you my thoughts on it. So as a graduate assistant, you are typically compensated with tuition, credits, housing, and stipend, meaning you've got to be a student. <laughs> you got to go to class. Job duties vary depending on the sport they are coaching, but your responsibilities may include helping the coaches organize practice, keeping player records, and traveling to games. So that obviously is kind of left up to the air. But the most important part, and something that to note is, this is very common. Brandon Spikes, former linebacker of the Florida Gators, Super Bowl champion of the Patriots, Buffs, etc., he is also a grad assistant at Florida currently, and he is going to school. He's constantly tweeting and interacting and talking about having to go to class and having to pass all the, ex the exams. He's right alongside, you know, the kids going to class. So that's what he's going to have to go in and become. Again, I don't, I, so with, you're being paid in tuition. You're being paid, like you're basically a student, right, in a way, uh, just like players were paid back in the day without NIL housing, so have a place to stay. And then stipend. So not very much, you know, income comes along with that. I'm sure he's not really too concerned with that. There's obviously a bigger picture in mind. But for people wondering exactly what does that mean, that's what it is. And it's not like it's, again, a, a shot a shot to him or to put him down in any way. Like I just said, Brandon Spikes, who has some of the same accolades, if not just as many, uh, had to start at the same place at his own modern at Florida. So that's just kind of the way of the land. Would Coach Prime like to have brought him in at a higher probably level? Probably. I don't, I, you know, those things we don't know. But I think it's going to be a big addition. This staff has really beefed up its, uh, you know, itself with experience. And again, this also goes again what to the DC is. And my thoughts on the DC. I mentioned it in the early video when we talked about it. And again, it wasn't the splash hire that a lot of people were hoping for, but there's reason for that. And again, we're going to read the comments and kind of break that down. So let's dive right into it. Let's just hop into your guys' comments again. Love that you guys always comment. I don't. I love feedback i love the criticism i love when people have their thoughts and opinions it's the haters and the negativity where it's like look like that's not even a comment you're just hoping to find some attention but some people had some concerns some people actually felt like hey this is a great hire and so i i, I felt like it was good to read it this one here from uh terrence parker 1241 it's an upgrade from charles kelly he was teaching the dbs to hit the ball out and not to wrap up so here's a here's an interesting one think about last year and the hires that coach prime did okay with sean lewis and charles kelly in my opinion those are big splash hires those were huge gets for Coach Prime at Colorado. Sean Lewis was on the up-and-up head coach at Sean Kent. Like That guy could have probably stayed another year there and landed himself a big Power 5 head coaching job, and now he's a head coach at San Diego State. So he was on the up-and-up, and you took that guy and made him an offensive coordinator. That was the probably one of the bigger splash hires of the year. Everybody was talking about it. Massive pull. We saw how that worked out. Didn't didn't go as planned. Okay, I'm not trying to make say that's negative. It just sometimes, you know, 
just because it's a splash hire doesn't mean it's going to work. Number two, Charles Kelly was another big splash hire. He wrote him from Alabama. He had experience as DC at Florida State. We made an entire video about this because when this defense was struggling, I go, look, this guy kind of has his, his sweet spot, and it's not the DC. It's in the behind the scenes. It's recruiting. It's being part of the secondary in, in another sense because the FSU's defense dropped dramatically when he took over the DC. So there wasn't a shock there when there was some struggles. Again, a second opportunity was a splash hire. Somebody with experience didn't work out. Now we're getting a guy that may not have DC experience, but has a lot of potential to be something extremely special and who's not going to go anywhere anytime soon, which I'll get ahead of myself in the comments. But thank you, Terrence. Great comment and, and, and great perspective on that. Next up, we've got William Quinton6133. He got some good, he had you know, he got someone young and he can trust, plus his first college coaching job, so they can't get to him. Y'all know Bob what I'm talking about. I don't know that last part what that means, but look, I think that's a, that's a, a, a you know an important one. He's got a young one. If you see what's happening kind of around the league, these the older coaches are kind of leaving. the The offensive coordinator for Alabama from Washington, who was going to Alabama, just left to go to Seattle. Chip Kelly from UCLA just stepped down to go be the OC at Ohio State, probably because he's like, look, we have an 80th recruiting class and we don't really do much in the portal. It's exhausting. I'll just come call plays for you. Is that cool, Ryan? All right, sweet. I'll see you there. These coaches that have been in this game for quite a long time are not liking the way that it's evolving, are not liking the way that it's the NIL because they are now having to learn a whole new asset of the game that it's like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm past that point, right? We, we just got it figured out and now you're changing the rules. I'm out. I'm going either going to the NFL or I'm going to go just do the base, go somewhere I can still be effective but not have to do all the, the, the paperwork. So we're seeing a lot of these older coaches find themselves in these unique roles. So getting somebody who's young, that's excited, that's willing to go out there and do things, plus he's on the talent team, Talent acquisition pool at uh, the Cincinnati, so he knows how to look for talent. A lot of lot of secret hidden things, and somebody actually mentions that in the comment section, which we'll get into in, again. Everyone is looking at the qualification of the new DC. How about how how about we take another look at the financial aspect of getting a top DC, willing to stay for a couple of years and not having a significant guarantee in their contract? Coach Prime could have been up against what these top DCs want in salary and guarantees. And that may only stay for one or two years. This young new DC with experience in the NFL as a scout and DB coordinator is looking to start somewhere and prove himself. Let's wait and see. And that's a good point, right? You go and you get somebody that is, let's say, is a splash higher, like a Sean Lewis, right? Even Coach Prime said this was a stepping stone for him. There was never really a longevity in that hire, which is fine. But you also don't want to have to re repeat and redo every single year, rinse and repeat, because... That's going to affect recruiting. It's going to affect the transport. It's going to affect the system. It's a lot of things you have to take into consideration. So, again, not the splash that everybody was expecting. I know a lot of accounts were out there pumping these big-time names and everybody was getting fired up. They have a ton of experience at D.C. Like, do you think these guys are going to, you know, that are up and up in their D.C. position that are more likely poised for a head coaching job taking this step back? It's, it's a lot to ask. So, great perspective there from empowering uh, your finances. Next up, we have... Pull this up here. It starts a little small to read. Uh, you glossed over some key points here. This is from Shelly R. And this is a this is phenomenal. They, this is again a comment on the original one, which I didn't say much, but this is fantastic. Yes, he has been with the Bengals for over 10 years now, but let's put some context to his tenure. Not only did he survive the Marvin Lewis firing, he has excelled with his head coach, Zach Taylor. So he has been part of a rebuilding the organization and a participant in their resurgence, including the playoffs, scout team experience, so he can identify and build a talent. Colorado needs some, some, someone with this exact type of backward background to jump in, adapt, and build up. I mean, that's, that's spot on. Again, that is a good point that he was part of him uh speaking of the, of the new dc was part of the downfall of the Bengals, and then also to the super Bowl run they made uh just a few years ago so i have a ton of experience in watching the ups and downs and the ebbs and flows of a successful and a poorly ran football team and again i think the biggest point is was part of the scout team for for two to three years i believe at the Bengals. knows what to look for knows like this guy is going to when the, to take this next steps and that's huge again with this portal how can we go get a guy that's going to be impactful right away that's what they're trying to do when they're drafting and recruiting guys or dra drafting guys uh into the nfl so last order last comment here we've got is and that was from shelly r so thank you Shelly R. from spur t1 this is the movement now young coaches are the rage he is coming from a solid defense he can't be any worse than last that uh Stanford game last year told me Kelly couldn't think on his feet. This guy would be way better. Now let's see if Sap will be part of that because Sal can, Haley, Sal, can, Sal can hardly walk. And we also have that answer too. At the time, we did not know if Coach Sap would be joining the staff, but Sap, like I said, has announced that he will be. But all in all, great stuff. I really do appreciate your guys' comments. Again, outside the ones that are just, you know, being negative for no reason. Those are just, you're wasting your breath. 
but it is what it is. It's just way of the land. I understand. Now, like I said, later on tonight, we'll be interviewing a potential 2025 uh, commit slash recruit that has received an offer from Colorado. I'm not going to say who it is just yet, but keep your eyes peeled for that. Turn the bell on because you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a fantastic interview. Phenomenal young kid. Excited to hear his thoughts and opinions on who he's looking at, where he's going, and how his recruiting process has been thus far. And if you guys have any questions that maybe we can ask before that interview, you know where to put them. Put them in the comment sections. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.